What's going on, everybody? My name is Jordan. I'm the head coach here at SaberSim, and I wanted to talk today a little bit about MLB showdown strategy, including contest selection and how I'd go about selecting slates and contests to play in this game type, and lineup construction strategy, how I'm using SaberSim and our powerful MLB Sims to build winning lineups for these contests. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Now, first things first, I wanna talk a little bit about contest selection and specifically how this fits into our DFS profit plan and our overall framework for selecting contests that I released at the start of the baseball season. First things first here, I don't think necessarily adding showdowns to your contest selection mix or your slate selection mix for baseball is gonna be the right thing for everybody, especially if you're already playing with a very small bankroll. If you are playing MLB and you are playing contests where you are not even filling all of the contests under three dollars for the main slate you might be best off just sticking to the contest selection strategies we talked about there focus on the main slate for now because that's going to be the slate that's going to attract the most casual players the contests for the main slate under three dollars as an entry fee are going to be some of the softest contests in a lot in the lobby for any sport and i'd recommend that your money is probably best getting down there first where MLB showdowns are good is if you are already playing the main slate and you are playing a, with a large enough bankroll where you are uh, exceeding all of the good GPPs that are under $3 entry fees, probably on both DraftKings or FanDuel, and you are going to need to get additional action down over that $3 entry fee, the showdowns might be a good idea to start looking at. The main reason why is both DraftKings and FanDuel limit what players can enter contests under $3 to players that have, I believe, a million dollars less than a million dollars in lifetime entries. So you are going to have a sharper field, uh, just generally tougher competition once you get over that $3 threshold, but you can get additional action down in the showdowns under that $3 point here and stay in some of those softer contests. Another advantage to playing these MLB showdowns here is it's going to smooth out your variance. So if you want a lower variance contest selection strategy, playing some of your action into individual showdowns instead of throwing it all into the main slates is going to smooth that out just because you're getting more slates in play that day. A very easy way to think about this is let's say that we you're building your lineups for the main slate and your angle that you took on a particular game was very off. Or maybe you have a pitcher that was in 70% of your lineups that just end up getting lit up. You are pretty much sunk on the main slate. It's not going to be a good day there. But if you're also playing the showdowns for that particular slate, and this also applies to some of the shorter slates for baseball as well, like turbos and night slates, if that game's not on the slate at all, you are just as live in that slate now, even if on the main slate most of your entries are sunk. And finally, and this is probably the, the least impactful here, but there is an opportunity to find overlay in these contests. MLB showdowns do not always consistently fill, especially if you do start looking into some of the other types of contests like satellites or winner take alls. If you are an overlay hunter and like checking around the lobby uh, around the time games are starting, uh, your best bet at finding consistent overlay in baseball is probably in the showdown contests. So in terms of contest selection strategy, a lot of what I had talked about in the last video about contest selection for baseball is still going to apply here. When you're thinking about your bankroll you're investing for that day, you still wanna to stick to a 5% maximum of your bankroll invested into baseball across the entire day. If you're already spending 5% for the MLB main slate, you don't wanna just start going and playing 5% of your bankroll in every showdown as well. I would recommend using your 5% of your bankroll you're investing for baseball that day and spreading it out across all of the slates that you might be playing. From there, you're still typically gonna to wanna to enter contests from lowest entry fee to highest using the same frameworks we had talked about in that previous video, which I'll drop in the description of this one as well. But when you're thinking about slate selection here, you really want to take a quantity over quality approach. A lot of the advantages that you get from playing these baseball showdowns here, uh, including smoothing out your variance and getting a chance to find some of that overlay uh, and just getting into soft after contests in general is benefited when you are entering more of these. So if you're going to start playing baseball showdowns here, I'd recommend trying to get into all of them. There are four showdowns on today's slate. That's pretty typical, somewhere probably between three to five or six, depending on the day. And I would be looking at attacking each of these here, spreading out your bankroll as needed to do that and getting action down in each of these slates. So you have these four independent slates that are uncorrelated from one another where you all you have upside to take one of these GPPs down in any of them. 
So let's talk about lineup construction here. And my goal is to give you a lightweight MLB showdown process that you can use to build successful lineups, taking into account a couple things that the Sims are not going to do on their own, but rely heavily on the simulations themselves to identify the optimal lineups to play. And the main reason why is because Saber Sim in a lot of ways is really built to crush showdown. And that's not to say anything about main slates, but what we are doing behind the scenes is basically exactly the optimal strategy for beating showdowns. If you're playing the Blue Jays and Royals contest here for the showdown tonight, what you are essentially trying to do is come up with the, uh, the game scripts of the way that this game could actually play out and build optimal lineups of what is the best possible lineup you could build when that game script actually does play out. That is literally what Sabersim does. When you have the app here pulled up, we've got the player projections for every player on the slate and the ownership projections, but we are actually going through, simulating this game out thousands of times, play by play, and when you build lineups with Sabersim, when the Sim Diversity slider is cranked all the way to 10, each lineup you get in your pool is the optimal lineup for a simulation. The, part, the hardest part about beating showdowns in really any sport, but baseball included here, is figuring out what are the possible game scripts of the way, what is the full range of outcomes of the way this game could play out, and then what are the optimal lineups that represent those individual game scripts. Sabersim really opti opt automates all of that for you, simplifies the process here. So for me, for my MLB showdown, process here. Most of the time I am just coming in here, starting building lineups here and doing a lot of my editing post build once I have those optimals to work with. Now that we've got our pool built of optimal lineups built from individual game scripts, let's talk about a few ways you can add value and trim this pool down a bit. Because this is still showdown here and we're playing with a relatively small player pool, there's a chance of getting duplicated with any of these lineups. Because of how many different hitters there are on each team and throwing relief pitchers into the mix, it's probably less likely for you to get duplicated in baseball than it is for a sport like NFL where the contests are enormous or NBA where there are m much fewer players that are viable in lineups. It's still something we want to consider. I typically like to use geo mean of ownership of a lineup as a proxy for calculating how likely a lineup is to be duplicated quickly and efficiently. I'm not going to go deep into the math of geo mean and ownership in this video. I'll link a video in the description that does, but I'll go ahead and show you the quick version of how to calculate that out. So let's pull up our calculator here. And what you basically want to do is you want to take the number of expected dupes or allowed dupes is kind of the way I like to think about it here. So in this case, I'm going to start with one divided by the contest size. So we'll say, let's hypothetically assume we're putting this into the mini max here. So 8917. And you're going to take that number and you're going to put it to the power of one divided by the number of players that are entered into a lineup. So for this, it is six. So the geo mean of ownership of each lineup that we want here to have an expectation of each lineup being duped one or less times is about 21.9, or actually we can say about 22% here. So there's a couple things that you can do. If you're on the Saberson Pro plan, which is by far my favorite way to do this, and in fact, I would say that doing handling geo mean of ownership is so impactful and so helpful through this way that if you're planning on playing MLB showdowns, I'd strongly just consider getting the Pro plan just for this alone is to use a lineup filter. And the main reason why I like using this with Saberson Pro in particular is because it is after the build has already run. You are building the optimal lineups, but then sorting out lineups that have a geo mean of ownership that is too high, so you're not affecting the sim integrity. What you will need is you will first need a custom metric here for geo mean of ownership. You can see I already have one here set up. It should look basically like this, the my ownership product or geo mean in this case, and the value. That will give you this custom metric that then you can filter against. So we will add a filter here now to say show only lineups with a geo mean of ownership that is less than and we'll use the 22. Another important thing to note here is we always use the actual percentage form of this number. So even though we got 0.219 here, we want to use 22 in this case. And now we'll save that. And what we're gonna see here is this trims off 57 lineups off of the top here, just the lineups that were the most likely to be duped at least once in our contest. It's not taking a ton of lineups out of our pool, but it is gonna trim some of the fat here. And on showdowns where the pitchers in particular are going to be some of the best optimal captain plays, this will actually trim off a lot more lineups out of your pool because it's harder to build unduped 
lineups for that kind of contest. The one other thing we definitely want to take a look at here, actually before we do that, the one I do want to mention a way that you can do this even if you're on DFS standard here, uh, which is going to be a little bit of a less effective approach, but it'll still get the job done. In this case, we'll go back to the home screen and we're just gonna set a rule to limit the geo mean of ownership instead. We can do that with a lineup rule here and say add new rule and then use an aggregate rule and set this equal to my ownership geometric mean is no more than 22. This is still gonna work fine. Ultimately, what this is instead going to do is it's going to take individual game sims and then build the optimal lineup where the geometric mean of that lineup is less than 22. So let's say, for example, you take a sim out to build a lineup here and the optimal for that sim is a geometric mean of 23. What SaberSim is going to do in that case is it's going to throw that lineup out, find the next best optimal lineup for that sim where the geometric mean is less than 22, and give you that lineup instead. The reason why I don't love this as an approach here is because technically that lineup is not the optimal lineup for even that game script alone. There was a better lineup, just a lineup that was more likely to be duped that was optimal when that game script paid out. So if you're on DFS standard and want to experiment with MLB showdowns, the, sh the short version of this is that this is going to work fine, but I do think it is a more efficient and better approach to use this with a custom metric and a lineup filter post build on the SaberSim Pro plan. The one other thing you definitely want to be looking into with these contests is relief pitchers. One of the really cool things about SaberSim is because we're actually simulating baseball to build these lineups, we're incorporating the bullpens. Average projections don't really do a good job of uh, handling the relief pitchers in the bullpen for each team, and you'll basically never get any into your lineups whatsoever with average projections, but because they do enter into the game and they do have upside outcomes, they will appear in your showdown lineups and can actually make a lot of sense in certain lineup constructions to be used there. The one thing you do want to keep an eye out, though, is the recent pitch history for these relievers here. Saberson does not at the moment take that into account, so you can get lineups sometimes with relief pitchers that have pitched recently and are very unlikely to play. Play. So what I typically like to do here is first check the captain pool. It's generally pretty unlikely to get a relief pitcher in your captain spot here, but it can come up, but I don't see any for this particular build. And then check your utility pool here. And all I'm going to do is search for relief pitchers. I want to get a sense of what relief pitchers are showing up in my lineup constructions here. So we see here uh, there are five pitchers, two for the Blue Jays and three for the Royals. And I'm going to use a tool like baseball usage on baseballpress.com to get a sense of uh, how recently these pitchers have have pitched here. Typically, if somebody pitched the day before and threw more than 10 pitches, a lot of times I will just X them out from my pool. As long as they haven't pitched the day before, I'm not super worried about it here. So it is Wednesday when I'm recording this here. So yesterday uh, was Tuesday. So I want to check for the Blue Jays. We're getting Tim Meza and Anthony Bass here. Uh, Tim Meza did pitch yesterday here. Anthony Bass did not. So I'm going to just uncheck Tim Meza. I'm going to turn the auto apply exposures on and I'm just going to remove him from my pool completely. Anthony Bass seems like a fine play here. Didn't pitch yesterday. I'm good with that. And now let's go look at the Royals here. And we will find them here and take a look. So we are getting uh, Dylan Coleman, Taylor Clark, and Chapman. Dylan Coleman did not pitch. Chapman did pitch yesterday. Um, and Taylor Clark did not. So we'll go ahead and uncheck Chapman as well here. Okay, so that did pop another relief pitcher back in. We're now getting some Adam Simber here, so we'll go back up and quickly check uh, his pitch history. He did not pitch yesterday, so I'm feeling pretty good about that again. If you know these teams and their bullpen rotations better than I do, this can be a spot where you can add some additional value if you think that a guy that maybe pitched 10 pitches or so yesterday, but the team is pretty comfortable rolling back out there another day. Uh, you maybe include them in your pool. I am typically looking more for reasons to remove relievers rather than to put them into my pool. So if I have any reason to believe that there's some doubt if a reliever is going to get into the game, I'm just going to remove them. These guys aren't even guaranteed to get in the game anyway, even if they didn't pitch yesterday. So I don't want any other reason to believe that they might not get in the game. But I am willing to play them overall. They're going to be extremely low owned. It's instantly a very easy way to make your lineup unique. And there is upside here for these guys. Uh, with how wide the ranges of outcomes are for most baseball hitters. Most of these hitters, their most common outcome is zero anyway. Typically, all you're counting on is for one of these guys to get in the game, maybe get a strikeout or two, rack up some points, and you have a unique lineup that has uh, upside and can be the optimal for that particular game script. 
Overall, that's basically my approach to building these lineups. I let the Sims handle a lot of the work here for me. I go through and filter out a few lineups that I think are more likely to be duplicated at least one time in the build, and I check on my relief pitchers, and I would be pretty much ready to enter these. I'm not super concerned about diversification for these builds. I want to make sure that I'm playing the top optimals from my set where possible here, and I'm getting a lot of my diversity through different slates I'm playing. I'm not super worried about totally bricking the Blue Jays and Royal showdown here because I have three other showdowns and probably the main slate and maybe other slates in my contest mix already. So overall, I don't want to dilute the quality of the sim optimals that I'm playing by trying to force diversification in a sport and a slate that is a part of a bigger portfolio that is in itself diversified. So finally, just to wrap up a couple other final thoughts here and, and, and a summary of what we've talked about here. I think baseball showdowns can be a great thing to add to your contest selection mix. Once you are playing all of the main slate contests and GPPs that are $3 or under on DraftKings and FanDuel. I think it's better getting some action down into these contests here that are back under that $3 range rather than starting to enter some of the very tough GPPs above $3 on those sites. If you have a contest selection or bankroll management strategy that is particularly variance avoidant, adding these contests can, and slates can also be a good idea. By reducing the likelihood of having a totally bricked day because you're playing all of these different uncorrelated showdowns, it's going to reduce your variance and it's going to allow you to realize more of your profit more reliably over time. And finally, if you're an overlay hunter, uh, definitely recommend at least keeping an eye out for these showdowns as their locks are approaching. A lot of times the GPP and especially the satellites and winner take alls and things like that will struggle to fill for these contests, uh, especially ones starting at a bit of a strange time, afternoon slates and things like that can be a great way to find a little bit of overlay. You can let the Sabersim Sims handle the most of the grunt work here for you because the simulations are literally doing what you need to be successful in showdowns. They are finding the game scripts for the way that the game could play out and building the optimals for them. When you're adding value, the most important things you can do is filter out some lineups that are more likely to be duped than the others in your pool and check on your relief pitcher pool to make sure you're not playing any guys that are just very unlikely to end up in the game. I hope this was a helpful walkthrough of how to play and how to be successful playing MLB showdowns. I think these are one of the more fun game types in the DraftKings lobby, even though the contests tend to be a little bit smaller. If you have any questions about MLB showdown, you can always reach out in our Discord server or uh, by emailing support at sabersim.com. I appreciate you all for watching. Thanks and good luck.